What do you get when you take one of America's premier horror authors? Combined with a calendar, short story, and a werewolf. You get the often forgotten, yet highly entertaining, Silver Bullet. Welcome to the Vault of Horror. Ought to be pretty accurate. Oh, why shoot, it's just a gag. I mean, uh, what the heck are you gonna shoot a 44 bullet at anyway? Made out of silver. How about a werewolf? Every werewolf story needs a good setting, like the woods, with an eerie full moon to bring the story's villain to life. Add in Stephen King. Hello, y'all. And of course, you never want to forget the silver bullet. Starting out as a calendar, featuring the lunar cycle of a werewolf, with illustrations and short standalone stories per month. King, feeling too restricted by the format, opted to take those illustrations and turn them into a novella called Cycle of the Werewolf. After proving to be bankable at the box office with a few hit movies, King was called upon to write the screenplay for what would become Silver Bullet. The movie mostly goes in its own direction, foregoing the 12 month cycle from the original story and getting right to the action. With most of the kills taking place over the course of a few full moons, the atmosphere and overall feel of the movie was also changed from a brutal, violent tone to a more humorous and fun, albeit still violent romp that is quintessential 80s horror. After a rash of murders, the people of Tarker's Mills are on high alert, believing one of their own to be a sadistic killer. Well, you got any leads? I'm working on it, Mayor. Even though they can clearly tell that people are being torn apart from limb to limb in what would appear to be an animal attack, the kills come early and often and are done through a combination of interesting camera angles, great atmosphere, obscuring the killer in mostly shadow, fog, and darkness. He seems to come for those who, in his mind, deserve it. He's cleaning up the town in a way local law enforcement refuses to. After the death of Brady, a local dirtbag teenager who doesn't exactly endear himself to the audience, the militia forms. It seems like every small town in horror movies has a group of clowns form a militia at some point. Shit, Earl. It's Ted Hollister. You dumb son of a bitch. Unequipped, ill-prepared, and no clue who or what they're looking for, they head out to find the faceless foe. And no resistance from local law or the town's reverend can stop them. Well, let it go, reverend. This is that community spirit you've been talking about. Great, ain't it? Heading into the woods ultimately results in a fun, creepy, and somewhat hilarious scene in which the men are taken out one by one. Soon after, we're treated to the one scene that was lifted directly from the book. Reverend Lowe, feeling the weight of the town coming unhinged, dreams of being ripped to shreds by his congregation. In an over-the-top sequence, somewhat reminiscent of the dream sequence in an American werewolf in London, minus the Nazis, of course, this marks the turning point in the film. From serial killer on the loose to more of a whodunit mystery, enter Marty. Marty's had his fair share of setbacks, but the dude also has a gas-powered, motorized wheelchair that goes 80 miles per hour, and an Uncle Red, played by the great Gary Busey. Ta-da! So I'd say life isn't too bad. Hey! Hey, Red! Uncle Red has a surprise for Marty. Due to all the killing and militia stuff, the town has implemented a curfew, canceling the 4th of July festival. This sets up one of the more suspenseful moments of the movie. While Marty's having a bit of fun setting off some fireworks, he's not alone. 
the werewolf attacks. At this point, Marty, his sister, and Uncle Red set out to find the man who attacked him on the bridge. Marty swears it's a werewolf, but Uncle Red isn't having it. The mystery and the twist of the movie isn't necessarily a strong suit, since they pretty much give it away during the Reverend's dream. Yes, the man with one eye is none other than Reverend Lowe. It came for me. I shot it in the eye, now he's wearing an eye patch. Everett McGill does a great job portraying Lowe as a man who's tormented by what he is, while also bringing a menacing presence to the role at the same time. Having some trouble. When he transforms into the wolf, though not on the same level as an American werewolf in London or the howling, it's still effective. The final stand at the family's house is pure, brilliant horror schlock. With a full moon bright in the sky, Uncle Red, still not convinced that they're dealing with a werewolf, plays along by having a silver bullet made. You want a silver bullet, huh? Which allows for a bit of werewolf lore as well. Marty had read all the legends about werewolves. And though they differed on several minor points, they all agreed on one. Take silver to kill a werewolf. When it appears they're wrong and nothing is coming for them, we get the moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> the werewolf cuts the power. Smart, tactical move, normally reserved for the likes of Jason Voorhees. Now that's an entrance, giving us a look on Gary Busey's face we'll never forget. After a short fight and a few tense moments, the werewolf takes a silver bullet to the eye. The film originally started out with the legendary Phantasm director Don Coscarelli attached, and though he did film scenes without the werewolf, due to conflicts in the design between King and the producers, Coscarelli ultimately left the project because of lingering frustrations. It would have been really interesting to see what he would have done with it, especially in the more horrific moments. With that said, Dan Adius, the guy who actually came in and completed this thing, deserves a lot of credit for bringing the film to life. This really is a satisfying werewolf movie, an 80s B-horror, with a few intense scenes and some really unique moments of dark comedy mixed in with graphic, yet fun, death and carnage. The story works, it doesn't outstay its welcome, and gets you to where you need to be without wasting time. King wanted the werewolf to be plain, more like an animal you would actually see in the wild. Different than the monstrous creature seen in other werewolf movies at the time. That works to the benefit of this movie's design, and in the long run has actually added to the memorable quality of the monster. Stephen King may have movies with a higher profile and larger fan bases, movies that have cemented their place in horror history. But over the last 30 plus years, Silver Bullet has become a cult classic in its own right, and that status is well deserved. Reverend, he was torn apart! Uh.